it's showtime. Hey, everyone. What's up, family? Well, Sunday Bites and Tidbits. I'm Chef Babette. And I'm Tara Bennett-Smith. And we're so happy to be here today. And guess what? We have an awesome, awesome guest for you today. He's yes. a friend of mine. He's a vegan chef. He's fine. And he's fun. And fine and fun. And there was some another one we had. Fine, fine. fun. Sexy. No, there was there was some three F's or four F's we were doing. Fine, fun, and fancy. No, that fine, was a word fun, and fit. Okay, we'll do that. Fine, fine and fun, and, and fit. fit. And you want to know who he is? Is it time to introduce him or do you want to talk? Well, first? well, let's talk a little bit. And you know, what we want to talk about. Well, we want to remind you that on November fifteenth, we are doing uh, oh, the, the Thanksgiving. Where you guys can cook along with us, so we'll be in the kitchen, and we're gonna get their little shopping list together. We're gonna get your shopping list and the recipe list. We have all the recipes. So if you see this little attachment here, oh, what is that? This is our it's attached and, to me. This is our headphones today because we don't have the other ones, and this helps us to Hear not you. have so much static. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So now we're like this. Today. You're like this. So if we look uh, 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 strangely close, that's right. But we don't really have to sit that close because it's a little <laughs> too warm for all that touchy feeling stuff. Like, get off me, girl. And, and neither one of us have COVID, so. No, we don't have COVID because we get COVID tested because we have to because of our... Okay, that part, we can go with that. <laughs> now I probably got something. <laughs> Lordy B. Lordy, you ever, you ever was sitting with somebody? Ooh, that was ignorant, though, that wasn't was it? That was so ignorant. <laughs> I did just brush my teeth though. Yeah, me. but the point is that's not even that the point. Me. It was so ignorant. That's her. not even the point. Sorry. Y'all. But the funny part, you know, like when somebody you're talking with somebody and and they have that kind of didn't <laughs> <your breath. laughs> you just sit there and you try to hold your breath. You don't want to really say a word without like talk you 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 say the words real fast and you hold your breath. You know, you my daughter did that. My daughter said to me the other day, she goes, Mom. I think I'm smelling your breath. What happened? Like, what the hell? It happened because you know we eat. Sometimes you, have- you eat something and you just lay around, and then the breath kind of gets. Thick. She looked at me with such a disturbed look on her face. She had thick breath. I like to call it thick. <laughs> it was, was it thick. thick it was thick and had personality. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but anyway, so remember, get ready on November fifteenth, and then after that, we're gonna take a hiatus. We're gonna say, hiatus. We're gonna hiatus. Like they do in television. We're going to hide in your Ada. So let's say hello to Pamela Bailey. Hey, y'all. I don't know why. Tina. Neat and Pamela and Tom. Tom, Tom, Tom. Got to offer offer them some Tic Tac. Oh, breath mint. Breath mint's coming around. All right, so is it time for our guest? Yes, we can. We can I'm bring so on. excited so to bring you tell on. Me, how do you know Chef Ayende? Chef Ayende and I did a thing together. I think I met him. Chef, I, Chef, you're going to tell us when we met, but I'm thinking we met. We met for sure at the uh, uh, Mercy for Animals, uh, one of those gala uh, uh, events. And I think he and I both might have been on stage. I'm not sure, but anyway, we met at one of those. I just knew I fell in love with him after I met him. And I was always like, we got to get Chef on the show. And, uh, and from my show. understanding, he's also a wonderful actor. Oh, yes, he is an He's actor. in front of the camera. He sees. He sees. But wait till y'all see him. He cute. He cute. He's yeah. very cute. Yeah, brother. <clears throat> anyway, without further ado, we'd like wait to Wait a minute, hold on. Oh, what? Does this go with being a brother? Like yeah, a you, know, uh, uh, you know, brother. <clears throat> So if you're not a so if you're not a brother, then what do you do? You pat like this? Wee wee. wee. I'm a pro. But if you're not a brother, what do you do? Woo woo. Woo woo. That's a <laughs> No, but I mean not a brother, meaning male. You're still a male, but you're not a brother. Is that for all men, or is that for brothers? Or well, I mean, you got some white boys that act like brothers. They okay, but if they too. don't, yeah, but if they don't, I mean, if they don't act like that, then then what do what do what do they get? They get hi. I don't know. <laughs> Why you put me on the spot like that? You know, don't think that fast. Anyway, Big without get further ado, we'd like to introduce all of you to our friend, Chef Ayende. See, that's okay. a brother. He knows what to do. He, he's just as crazy as you are. Yeah, he's crazy. What's up, baby? 
What's going on? First of all, I love both of y'all. Y'all's dynamic is crazy. I have this is the first time, <laughs> first time watching and being on the show. And I'm just like, this is awesome. I oh yeah, it. we're a little, we're we're a lot. I say a little, but we're a lot to the left. Yeah, we're not your traditional because <laughs> we don't do anything traditional. <laughs> Because no. we are just not those people. We just like to have fun and bring a lot of information. And you know what? The thing What's about that? the two of us, what? we've understood what friendship is. So Whoa. we don't trip with each other about nothing. She can be as, she's always been ultra honest. Oh, Lord. When I, when she first, she's my manager. So when she first okay. started dealing with me, she had to critique me when I would get on stage. And yeah. man, you know them critiques sometimes. <laughs> My best but mine were not. But especially with an honest manager. She would look yeah. at me sometimes, she'd be like, I don't know what's wrong with your energy on that one, but <laughs> No, I I was always very nice. I was always very nice. But she taught me mm -hmm. a lot, so that's but, why but I love you her. know what? But that's what the whole journey's about. If we're not learning from each other, then you know, if what's you need if you need to be right all the time. Right. You know, and, and think, you don't want to hear because you think you know too much, then whatever. What do you I think? think? I, I think that it's it's great to have a person in your life that you can get the honest truth from, right? Because so many people in our lives, we have that filter, right? Like, so it's my, my mom or my sister or, you know, you got filters, filters, filters. But if you have that one person who's going to check you and be like, yo, what you doing? Like that, to me, is so worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's why she's my friend. Yeah. Went from manager to best No, best we went to friends first. We knew each other before I met. Yeah, but no, it was never this. I love you now. Oh, she knew like me before. I mean, I knew this you. Is, I love you. This is, but, <laughs> this is a revelation you know? right now. <laughs> oh, she had to go check the doorbell. You know, in the middle of the show, people are ringing the doorbell. People are texting me now. I'm putting it on, I put it on, on uh, what you call it, on airplane wow. mode. Oh, you put yours on, this is a... This is her doorbell. I know. Um, so tell me, while she's at the door, tell me yes. a little bit about how you got started. How I got started as a chef? Um, I grew up in a vegan household. Like, I grew up vegan. And then I, uh, mm -hmm. my mom started a vegan food distribution business. Um, I was about 13, I think. And I was also homeschooled. It's interesting because... I grew up vegan and I was homeschooled, which is people are having to forcibly homeschool their kids now. And my mom did it with all three of us, right? Uh, and she was an entrepreneur, so she decided to like take the food that we would eat at the house and and sell it to other people. Okay. Oh, really? Mm hmm. So we talking so about that? We talk about my mom, uh, how I got started. My mom, so my mom, mom was a vegan, oh. and so he grew up in a all vegan household. Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. so this was when vegan really wasn't fashionable at all. at all. Oh no, 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 no. We were very much considered the weird kids. I mean, this was this is back before, yeah, before like the the culture changed, right? Um, there was still like you know old co ops and dirty people and all this. So sort was of stuff, it in but... the nineties? Or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the nineties. Nineties. So let me ask you this: Pacific Northwest. What, you you grew up in L.A. Pacific Northwest, Tacoma, Washington. Oh, okay. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. So how was it? Because now they have so many alternatives to, you know, like you can have a vegan hot dog if you want to go to a party and you want to have, what did you, did you guys do any of that stuff? Cause you just said the kids stand in the corner eating a carrot stick. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom put a carrot on, on a hot first dog. Of all, first, of all, first of all, I'm triggered. Okay. I'm triggered. First of all. Okay. Cause that was, <laughs> that was most of the time. No, you just, <laughs> the vegan thing was, it was terrible. Oh, it was terrible back he then. It was terrible. It was terrible. Like I remember when they first had like the first round of like vegan cheese. Man, like you could put a blowtorch on it and it would not <laughs> melt at all. Okay. <laughs> like it was it's terrible. So, so my parents so they just true. cooked a lot. They just cooked a lot. They cooked all the time. And I I was like the last one in the family to learn how to cook. My older sisters cooked, everybody cooked. I never really had the patience for it. Um, I was like, I want to do it now, 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 now. And then later on, I I learned. So after like working in the family business and stuff, I opened a cafe in Seattle, and I sort of and I got into like the habit of like cooking and then just learning how to cook throughout the day because you know like that's why you cook in the morning because it takes a long right. time to cook, right? So I'm so now I'm I'm learning. Okay, now you take your time, and then. 
I wouldn't say I really started to grow that exponentially as a chef until I moved to New York. I moved to New York in uh, 2005. And after that, I was like, I give up cooking. I've been cooking since I was 13. I had owned a cafe. I was like, I'm good. I'm out. I'm done. But then I got to New York around 2000, late 2005, 2006, and I was doing the art thing, and I was making music, and I was acting, and I'm doing all these things. I made a, you know, I was in a, a movie. Um, I was making beats for people. It was, it was a whole thing. And then 2008 came around, and the economy fell apart, and I was like, shit, I got to get a job. Yeah. And so <laughs> I went. So <laughs> I wrote that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there was no money in the arts. So I got a job as an executive chef, and um, well, they had. It's funny because so it was at this yoga. My my yoga studio it was called Jiva Mukti, and it was like a third of a a third of. Uh, they had a whole floor of a building in Union Square. A big third of it was a cafe, and the rest of it was this yoga studio. And I had had my little hustle. I was like, oh, if you volunteer at the at the studio, you get free classes. So I volunteered like once a day or once a week, and I get my little free classes more if I needed them. And I remember the cafe was in there, and it closed. It had closed down. Nobody, knew, they couldn't find a chef to make it work. And then, and this is this is really the power of like thought, right? So I'm dropping off some little something into the into the cafe, and I just thought to myself, I'm like, hmm, I want this place. Mm. That was it. That was it. Be, because it, it just reminded me of like the cafes, the places that I grew up in. And then fast forward by the end of that summer of 2008, um, my yeah, end of 2008, yeah, they offered me the job as executive chef there, and I was like. First I, first, I said no, because I still wanted to make, make my beats and go make my movies and stuff. And then everything on, on that side of my life kind of fell apart. And I was like, OK, food. And I, just, and I took the job as executive chef. And that was the first time I'd had. And I had, I had owned my own place before, but my place was small. right? So I had, I had never been an executive chef before. But I was like, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you brought up that food? Oh, my god. <laughs> yeah, sure did. I mean, I could cook, so I and I had a, I had a large repertoire of recipes, and I brought like and I think it was it was the pressure of it was like the the, the things that was going on in my in my in my regular life, the pressure of like not like if I say yes to something, like I'm going to do it to my I'm going to do it my best, right? Mm -hmm. It didn't even occur to me that I was I was amongst this class, right, of young executive chefs in Manhattan. And I'm working, and I'm working, and one day the phone at the uh, at my desk rings, and it's the New York Times, and they're like, "Hey, we heard you're doing some great stuff with vegan food down here." And at the time, this is when Twitter was hot, and they're like, and "Russell Simmons is tweeting about your food," and blah 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 blah. Wow. And, they took, and they took a quote from me for this article, and then I was in the the New York Times again as a chef. But it was so crazy because that whole situation kind of came as, like I said, very serendipitously, and. I didn't even want, I was like, no, I don't want it, no. But like, that's how, it's funny, like those opportunities, those things that, mm -hmm. that come to you, and it's never what you think it's gonna look like, yeah. you know? But <laughs> it, it, it's also, it, when it's for you, no one else can have it, you know? That's right, so it's yours, true. that's true. So let me ask you a question. So you're growing up a vegan, did you ever wish you were not? And did you ever have an opportunity to try any food that, you know, any meat has did you ever? I know. <laughs> I mean, I, did you like slip uh, up? Like, did you sneak? Did you sneak and have your crack cocaine moments? Well, <laughs> <I> guess, <laughs> your fried chicken and waffles. <laughs> uh, come on, we know. Tell us. Tell us. <laughs> I can tell you this. I can tell you this. Yeah, it, it. It. I was vegan the exact same time of the sort of fast food revolution. And if you remember all the commercials that were on TV, it was nothing but like Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, blah, blah, blah. Like. I'm not, I can't even lie to you, like food, like being vegan in the minority, you're like, well, what's the hype about it? at least? Like what everybody eats meat, I'm the weirdo over here, right? So definitely was curious about it. But for some reason I never like did, I never like had a piece of fried chicken or went to McDonald's or whatever. I would just like continue being like the weird kid who was like, oh, I already ate. Um, <laughs> and wow. Yeah, it was it was it was a strange That's a trip. The social part of it, I think, is the is the hardest part. Yeah. Was the hardest part. Yeah. I think it's very different now. Now that yeah. you know, veganism is a lot more well known, and you know, even other allergies or food preferences. But back then, it was it was uh, it was tough. It was tough. So sure. now your 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 family uh, they didn't eat animal products. So was it just strictly for your health, or 
was it for other reasons? Were they, you know, into the rights of animals? Um, well, no. We weren't talking off, too much about our planet, so. Mm, it was it was more for um, just like our personal lives, like my mom's, mm -hmm. my my grandfather on my mother's side passed away early in her pregnancy with me, and from what what were complications of a bad diet or like pre-existing health conditions, right? Um, kind of going downhill fast. And she, her, what she said is she just decided she wasn't gonna continue the cycle. She was like, no, I'm not gonna do it anymore. We're gonna, we're gonna try something new. That's pretty tricked out because back then, right. we weren't really connecting the our food, food so much with our illnesses. Not really because mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. would all would have the same illnesses. Mm -hmm. They'd all die, mm -hmm. well, we have diabetes right in our family. family. And that's mm -hmm. how they say it, you know? Mm -hmm. Or we're big bones when we start swelling up. We big bones, so, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, that's that's yeah. pretty tripped out. Yeah, yeah, they were they were definitely ahead of their time. I'll I'll, I'll give them that for sure. Um, and both both of your parents? Both of my parents, yeah. Wow, wow. that's very How yeah. Nice you are. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And so they they had to because the options were so so minuscule yeah. then that they like, yeah. had to be creative back then with yeah. the meals. Uh, you know, hundred percent, hundred percent. Especially getting you kids to eat that way. Yeah, I mean, that. well. It's interesting because like my so my grandfather in the town I grew up in, he was known as the fried chicken man. Like he had the best recipe for fried chicken. Everybody knew it. And when it came down to us kids, like not being able to have the family fried chicken, right? Right. Mm -hmm. It just it causes this big rift in the family. Like, you know, like black mm -hmm. people and our food is very yeah. it's almost like religion, right? It's so yeah. it's so it's so yeah. heavy. Um so that you know, growing up, I think that's the part that I remember standing out the most about being vegan. Because people actually got offended. Oh, they get offended when you, you come know? in mm -hmm. and have to. Oh yeah. What's wrong Can't with her? Yeah. And What's then, wrong? and then, older people would always be like, "You too little. You need to put some meat on your bones. You ain't eating enough. You gonna right. die." Uh, right. Yeah, that's right. true. Because I've been told that right. a lot of times. What's wrong with her? <laughs> Yeah, well, I stay skinny. Wow, what so, a story. so you've never had any like health conditions, issues, nothing that? No, no, I haven't. And I and I recently, you know, <laughs> oh, again, no. I'm good. No, I haven't. I haven't. But you know, I recently went to the doctor and I got like a full panel, full blood panel to like see just to make sure, and everything is right where it's supposed to be. So, because you know, people are like, oh, you you probably have low testosterone because you're a vegan, and I'm like, no, I don't. Just the I, opposite. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Look, he gonna be eighty five years old. Want a baby? You, you, I, maybe, maybe I might be that guy. It could be my future. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, but it's true. It's yeah, true. it's true. You know. Um. So, what was like your specialty, like meal? Because we get coming up on Thanksgiving. So, mm. like, what was something that Ooh, we you... could do, Chef Iende's recipe? <laughs> well, let's see. What do you got, yeah. Chef Iende? Uh, so, about it. so I um, so I have this this product called Mac and Yeast. It's a vegan macaroni and cheese. It's something I've been making since my first cafe days. Um, and finally, uh, I'd say in the past like three years, so I started selling it at Whole Foods out here on the West Coast. Um, in sixty three different stores between SoCal. Uh, Las Vegas, Arizona, Maui, and Oahu, and nice. I sell it mail order through my my website and you know through my uh, Instagram page. So we cover the whole. Never country. mind, y'all. Yeah. We ain't gonna share recipes. We just gonna have yeah, to no, do no. us a variation well, of mac and cheese. No, but yeah. we can also we can also just get some of his mac and cheese. You can yeah, order it, and tell yes, people where it. they can get it. Yeah, because we can. You know, yeah. if you can go find something sure. that's good, you don't have to make. Sure. I'm all yeah. for that because yeah. you know there's a lot of food that goes into Thanksgiving. So, right. so what? What? Okay, so when people first tasted your mac and cheese, because you know us people of color, yes. our mac and cheese is, is one of the it's staples. A, it's a cornerstone. And, and don't of be showing up. Okay. Yeah, and don't be showing up with <laughs> mac and cheese with look with with. With cheese, with with uh, mac, but no hardly no cheese. You know, how people right. have just a little like they don't want to put the expensive cheese in, so it's like a <laughs> yeah. bunch of pasta with a little bit of cheese. You yeah. Know, so we don't want that. So tell us, how close is your mac and cheese to 
well, feeling listen, like you eating some mac and cheese. Well, listen, I, I'll, I'll say it like this: like I've been, there have been times when I've made a living only selling mac and cheese. I think that's actually Whoa. right now. Yeah, because it's 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 something that people really love. Um, and I've been, I, it's one of those recipes that I've been working on, sort of just perfecting for I would say at least like twelve to fifteen years, right? Just something I'm making constantly, making constantly. And I think after you make a recipe that many times, you just kind of learn the ins and outs of it, right? You learn how to make it really sing. Um, and the mac and, you know, like it's, yeah. I mean, it's for, you know, for a, a vegan macaroni and cheese for black people, they have mm. tasted it and they're like, yo, I didn't know it could be like this. Um, wow. yo, this Cause is, that's this a is hard amazing. one to do, mac and cheese. Oh, you know, it is. We, we, we've been at a few mac and cheese cook-offs and um, mm-hmm. yeah, and um, yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you know, yeah. when, yeah. when yeah. people try to be creative and it's sweet, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what a sweet mac and cheese. It's like don't do, yeah. don't just put everything in mac and cheese. Right? Yeah. Taste this sweet mac yes, and cheese. Yeah, we were at that yeah. Don't even mention the name. <laughs> but they had sweet mac and All cheese. Them out. They had mac and cheese. He said, call them out. But they had mac and cheese with all kinds of stuff in the market. I just want mac and cheese. Right. right. I just want some good old mac and cheese. Don't put about 19 things in there like rice yeah. and broccoli and chickpeas. Right. What the heck? Right. You know, I'm you write in your crunch. Yeah, make no. the sauce out of carrots and shit. Like, no. Yeah. You- <laughs> <laughs> I've not had that one. No, but yeah, I'm telling you, I got a sweet mac and cheese. Oof, and I said, yeah. I didn't understand what I just couldn't get with, like, my brain wouldn't wrap around it. Yeah. So yours, so yours, when yeah, I bite into your mac and cheese, yes. I'm going to feel like, oh. you know, feel... I, I live at Whole Foods. I'm getting some tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to support yeah. you. It's, um, I, just, it, let the experience just come over you because it's not, you know, I tell people, like, no, it's not mac and cheese. No, it's mac and cheese. It's a whole, it's an experience. <laughs> It has well, listen. It has flavor in it. That's so, spoiler alert. That's what people like about it. It has flavor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not, and that makes the difference. That's that's yeah. all. That's all people really desire because food is so emotional for us. I mean, you know what yeah. I'm saying? If we can't get yeah. nothing else, we get a good meal that that pleases our palate. We're in listen. heaven. Listen, don't put no cheese on that. It's so funny because I just feel like that we overlook that a lot because food sometimes like so as a black person, right, as a black man, as a black woman, the amount of like bullshit you deal with. I don't know if I'm supposed to cuss on here or not, but the amount of bull you deal with out in the world. And then when you come home, sometimes the only pleasure you get is a meal. True. In a day. That's true. You know what I'm saying? And so like we we I want to make sure that if you decide to make that a vegan meal that yeah. you enjoy it. You enjoy it, right. Right? Right. Because, right. I mean, food has such a, food has such an interesting place in our culture, you know? And we can talk about it. We can talk about, you know, all the different ways that we cook food, but also, like I said, what what it means. Like, what it, you know, this recipe was passed down from my great-grandmother Mary, my, my father's grandmother. Um, when she would make a baked vegan, a baked mac and cheese. It wasn't vegan, but she would make a baked mac and cheese on Sundays for Sunday dinner or Sunday supper, which would mm-hmm. happen maybe once or twice a month, right? So it's like those memories, you know, traveling through food and to be able to, and to be a chef and to be able to like, sort of like orchestrate that and like be a part of that to me is, is dope. Right. So how long did you have when you got, when you became executive chef there? How long were you there? Yeah, how long? Uh, like three, three years, three years and some you change. You did good, Sweetie. You did good. Yeah. Well, and, I was the only one who made it work. Ah, so was yeah. it was it because I'm a New Yorker? Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and I know a lot of times the 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 location matters, mm-hmm. and things seem to fail uh, consistently in the same spot. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah, for some reason, yeah. whatever comes there just yeah, doesn't, it just work. doesn't work. Yeah. So yeah, when you came, obviously. It was time. It was time for something, and people yeah. were looking for something different. So your family were never vegetarian; they just went straight to vegan. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, straight to vegan, hardcore. It's like, nope, we're done. And y'all was all black. It was all black folks. Yeah, I mean, yes, we're all black. And I mean, again, like you know, I'm a. <laughs> I caught that. 
<laughs> yeah, you try to. Meanwhile, meanwhile, you try to tell my uncles or my my extended family that we don't want no ribs, and they they just tried to have a heart attack. What what you mean you don't want no ribs? Like ribs? I know you guys stood out. I know that was that's weird that's for very most hard. black folks. That is in just, general, even now, weird. Yeah. Even now, but it's a little more acceptable now. But back then, oh, yeah. are you, you go to your family's house and you don't want no ribs, and you, you should read that one. Too. Oh. It's okay yeah. becoming a vegan for health reasons, but it would have been golden. Okay, let's see what she's saying. It's okay, it's okay yeah. becoming vegan for health reasons, but it would have been golden if you have connected with the animals. With the animals. Oh, let me let me respond to that. Um, so that's where we started from, right? So, and I think I'm not sure how long this person has been a vegan, but I know a lot of these. I see a lot of these comments. Um, so I I grew up vegan, right? That was the first thing I was kind of put into it, and then. You get older and you learn, oh, everything is made out of animals. Shoes, yep. uh, upholstery, uh, <laughs> fucking toothbrush, brush, whatever, everything. So it's like, oh, how do I then sort of, how do I then try to un, unpeel myself from this society right. where everything is based on animals, right? And so you do what, what the thinking person does like okay I, I i'm not gonna throw away clothes because you know maybe you can't afford to buy another coat but i'm not gonna buy right. a new leather, a new leather coat right you know there. what i'm saying and you become very you know cautious of of what you're of what you're buying because the thing that so the extended theory or that my mom you know my parents would talk, tell us is that the reason why we became vegan was she wanted to raise humans that didn't have to rely on killing something to live and then that human, right? That the mindset of that human takes care of animal rights because I don't even look. I'm not looking at an animal like, oh, I can wear that. I'm looking at an animal like, okay, cool, that's an animal, right? Right. So people who who are about who who go animal rights first, that's fine. But I feel like it's the we're the we're at the top of the food chain. So the human has to make the choice not to take away the animal's rights. Well, yes, that's that I, did. I didn't. I wasn't thinking about animals at all. I wasn't thinking about animals. I wasn't thinking about the planet. I had a hard time digesting food. Meat wasn't working for me. My skin was ripped apart because of the sugar and all that crap. And right. I saw illnesses in my family. And I just, I was just like, okay, I'll try it. Mm -hmm. But I, it had nothing to do with anything mm -hmm. but me. Period. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 I, I I'm not even sure if I'm adding to that or not. But part of my, you know, and I I stopped eating meat back in '79, kind of back back and forth a little bit over the years. Never went back with went back to fish and then got off of fish, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and and one of the things I like to add to that, on top of that, is you know, yes. Animal, we want, we have compassion for animals. We don't even have compassion for each other as people. You know what I that mean? Part. And, and let's, that let's part. Start, yeah. You know, let's start because when we start to have compassion in general for each other, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, we're vegans, but how often do you just curse somebody out down mm -hmm. the street? And how often right. do you call somebody out of their name? Mm -hmm. And how often do you yeah. do all Guilty. of that stuff? Guilty. You know, yeah. how often yeah. have you lent a hand to somebody without? you know, judging them, all that other stuff. So I think when we become compassionate people in general, in general, in general. And, and I'm with you on that. And what I think like this question right here, when she says human life is more valuable than animal life, I would beg to differ. I believe that we are one in this universe. We are all connected, animal, human, flower. It does not matter. That intelligence that created me created all of it. It, we are nothing but expressions of that intelligence. So how can I make myself here and everything else down here? I'm sorry, that is not where my heart is. I do not believe that. I do not believe that. I believe oneness. That's what I believe, love and yeah. we are all together. I don't care about your complexion. I don't care about none of that. It's all about loving each other mm -hmm. and our that's, home. And that's that's the energy that we haven't, <clears throat> the world hasn't made a move from love in, I don't even know when, you know, it's always like, uh, it's a terrorist. Oh, we got to do this. We got to hold with the consciousness yes! to shift into this fear thing. Oh, it's, you know, we have to shift on fear, but we've never shifted on love. 
Oh, mm -hmm. that is beautifully yeah. stated. You know what else I noticed that we do? Mm. We make too much television that always talks about death, destruction, hurting, mm. doing horrible things to one another. And that it seems like that's where our consciousness is well, all is. the time on destroying. Because, I, mm. well, it's kind of jumping off the vegan train, however, but to me, part of that is, is that's because people thrive on things being wrong. We thrive on the, the negative. We thrive on that energy. And that's what I'm saying. You know, we talk about animals versus people. People, when the people get right on an individual basis, whatever that is for you, we then we bring in a community. You know, it's like we say, oh, we got to talk to the community. We gotta, well, the community is made up of individuals, of individual people. And you can't get a community to change until you get an individual to change. And then that individual gets another individual to change. And now we have a community of people that are talking and sharing knowledge. And, and, and this show particular, what we do here is to be able to not necessarily say you got to become vegan. You're going to do what you want to do. At the end of the day, this is not about that. This is about sharing all of the people who have stories, who how they, they've had their traditional, my family has, you know, we grew up with cross-eyed. We got cross-eyed diet, you know, in our family. We all are diagnosed with cross-eyedism. And, and, and how somebody comes on and say, yeah, well, we cured our cross-eyed because we stopped eating something. You know, oh, and it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just about, you know what I'm saying. I'm just using that yeah, example. But I was like, ooh, I feel cross-eyed. <laughs> but it's just the thing is that, you know, part of what this show does is we want to share that, you know, these, we just all regular folks who made a choice yeah. and, and, and to change our, our lives so that we can become healthier on mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And then have, and then we'll have compassion for other things. But to say, you know, as you have to become a vegan and then look at animals, it's like, no, I think if we become, you know, if we become whole people in ourselves, then we will look at everything. Different. Oh, it's the wholeness. It's the wholeness That's in ourselves good. as an individual. Then we yeah. will look at everything differently and yeah, have a little like more compassion. Oh. I will probably never be an animal activist. I'm going to tell you right now. That's just not my thing. It's not my thing. But you, oh, you, you practice animal activism in your activism in your own way. Right. It is the way Correct. that you live. You don't have to be out there holding signs and going up in no meat slaughterhouse to be no animal activist. You well, I think it's the same. Up. Go ahead, baby. No, I was gonna say yeah. I think it's the same. The same as how you know we're looking at overall activism now, right? There are people who are in the streets doing things, and there's people who are donating money who are you know doing things from their from their in their own way, but they're exactly. all about you know. The, the, the movie, I right? consider myself yeah. an animal activist, but I For have sure. a restaurant. So what I For do sure. is I avoid giving people, killing others to share my cuisine with other people. I'm just not going to do it. Exactly. Okay, when you give someone peace where you don't carry out any negative acts toward their direction, then you have given them more than what love can offer. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. Um, and it's very true. Because, it's, you know, yeah. I think on the whole... Everyone's just trying to figure out how to get through this thing. Life is healthy and it's as happy yeah. as possible. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and unfortunately, okay, what is that? Oh, oh that let's see that one. Uh, hold on. Obesity runs in my family more like it walks. It walks. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell them to slow down. They're too fat to run. Tom, is that you? It don't. Tom is crazy. Tom is crazy. We love Tom. Like Tom is our Tom is one of our right, okay. too bad to run. Well, you know what? I don't even know what to say to that, Tom. Maybe you can make them some mac and cheese. <laughs> go buy some go buy some mac and cheese. And yeah. it'll make them feel better. But wow. Yeah. Um what is this? I'm I'm now I'm committee for health, but it's reinforced with animals and ecology and the planet. And that's, that's wonderful. Great. I love that's that. That's wonderful, Star. Yeah. That's great. We we applaud that. Yeah. That's just not, you know, I think sometimes we have to be very careful. Well, we don't. We have to do nothing. But I think it one of the things is that, to be careful. yeah, that just when you're vegan, everybody has their own reason. You know yeah. what I mean? Don't yeah. just assume that, okay, now you're vegan, you have to go out and save the animals. It's, you know, it's, it's not everyone. No calling but you do what you do once you become vegan you're already saving animals exactly. you don't have to do exactly. anything else. right right just exactly. do you and keep yeah. everybody else in mind live and let live and that's 
that's my model. That's how I do it. I don't, I, I don't, I don't have to be in the street carrying funds. I don't, I don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. But for, uh, what, 30, almost 30 years, I've been an animal rights activist and I have not ever, I've not killed animals to nourish myself, yeah. which I will not yeah, nourish yeah. myself. I wanted yeah, to hurt myself. So exactly, you know. exactly. So, and you so, and your individual, your individual action, especially as a chef, spread so much so far. You know. Yeah. Because I'm sorry. Did, I was did, Go ahead. Did Did you find uh, in your restaurant in New York that you have you could like you converted people just based on your food and people saying? Yeah, I think pe- so. People will come in, you know. So it, when you when you have a, a vegan restaurant. There is your base level of vegans that you're always going to get because there's always going to be vegans in the town and be like, I eat vegan food, I'm coming here. And then you get the people that the vegan person brings maybe for lunch, right? Mm-hmm. And then yeah. you get like the rest of, you know, the, the dates and all that sort of stuff. So you want to like as a, you always want to like have a mix of everybody. And in my mm-hmm. restaurant, I always had, I always thought about the non-vegans, right? Mm-hmm. The person who was the person who was coming as the date or the, the friend or whatever, you know, right. have food that just like is, is, is tasty. It's just, you know, that's what people want. And I think once you, as a chef, you learn the tricks of how to satisfy cravings, right? So you're right. salty, you're sweet, you're, you're crunchy, you're heat, you're right. cold, yeah. you know, your acid, all these things. And it's like, it dances around in the person's mouth and they're like, it doesn't matter what it is. This is good because that's what, it's, that's good. What, it's a, the sensations are a part of flavor. You are the time you're not looking mm-hmm. for anything, but Textures, textures, yeah, flavor and, and flavors, yeah. Mm-hmm. And once you have that, you say, I can't give up my, I can't give up my fried fish roll. You can have some fried mushrooms. It's texture yeah. and taste, and taste, yeah. and and the seasoning. You know, let's see what Jen, let's see what Jen has to say. Hey, Jen, Jen, you start to feel differently as well. It's a positive force for change. Stop dairy, stop meat, and you start to get mad because there's no reason for kill for the killing. Progressive. Uh, that's true. Oh, yeah. so true. So, um, you, do you do desserts as well? I listen. I make pie. That's my dessert. I can make the hell out of a pie. So, any kind of fruit pies. My my favorite kind is peach cobbler. Um, my Ooh. second favorite is a. Uh, I have this blueberry orange zested cobbler. It's it's amazing. Yes, and you buy that too? And, and you buy that at Whole Foods? No, no, this is that this is at my house. This is in the kitchen. So you need to okay. come over. So, so, so let me ask you this. So on the 14th, I can come pick one up. <laughs> is that this is what I'm over here? Over here advertising pies. Just leave it outside the door. <laughs> okay. We're so, for, it so you put it out. For, for, so, for social distancing, right? Just leave it outside the door. Yes. Yeah. Sure why he thinks I'm joking. She ain't playing. So, I know. The, the we behind that door. I hear him laughing. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, you want a confirmation? Oh, uh, I mean, you. I'll tell my assistant to, to get in touch. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> That's what it sounds like. You know, oh, you want, con- yeah, I, you know, you could come. I just go. But he don't want to lie to you. I know. Yeah. And he don't yeah. Care, you know. <laughs> Not in front of all these people. So what, exactly. what what you're saying is we'll talk about it later, right? We'll Jen talk about it. Going up for her too. Okay, Jen one on one one. How many of y'all want some of this cobbler? <laughs> so the first thing the orange thing, the orange thing. Oh, you're not cooking like that? You can uh, do a little, I mean, little mini one. Yes, little cobbler. We'll do little mini ones. Little ones. Okay. You know what? I might, because why not? I got this why little not? like this little you mini like pie maker. You yeah, can no, come you... to help us do this Thanksgiving meal. Oh yeah, oh, that would be fun. Wait, when are y'all? Do, what are you doing? So what we're going to do 15th. on the fifteenth, we're going to um, get everybody. Everybody's going to have a list of ingredients they can cook along with us, and we're just going to do a bunch of Thanksgiving dishes at our friend's house. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, so we can ride right. with us. Okay. Oh. Okay. Problem. No, Paris, you ain't never hung with me before. <laughs> oh, we do. We do it together. We're doing it together. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I want to do it. We'll but, 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 but we got to pick you up. You got to ride with us. I mean, you don't have to oh. ride. Because oh, okay. it's like an hour away. It's an hour away. Oh, where is it? See, mm-hmm. You can't tell see, everybody. See, oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah. See, he'll be like, so it's not we'll pick you up. A- yeah, it, we just needed a big kitchen. And a she, big she gave oh, us a big oh, kitchen. Okay, okay. 
Huh? You got a big, beautiful kitchen? Do I have a big? No, no. My kitchen is like small and agile. Yeah, mine is too. Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for that. But anyway, high. so, okay, so everyone in your immediate family is still vegans. You have siblings, correct? Yeah, I have two sisters. Yeah, they're vegans. And they're still vegans too. Mm hmm. Wow. That's incredible. That's that's like from birth all the way to do life. That's I would amazing. I would like to have experienced that. I don't know. I'm glad I got a chance to I not. just was so sick all the time. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. Sick. Uh, yeah. What do you have coming up. So you no more restaurants for you, correct? I'm assuming. No, no. Um I I mean right now the hardest work you ever did. Is oh, yeah. You ain't never yeah. oh. You're yeah, never no. No, There's and you just and you just you just running off adrenaline, you know, it's 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 crazy. I mean it's fun, but it's also I've had enough. It's a lot of work. Yeah. So what I'm working on right now is actually um building out more uh recipes that I can sell through my website. So I have um I put it in the chat there, mac and yeast dot com so you can order the food. Right. And I'm working on adding more uh products to to that. Uh you know, I think we're we're in this time of like People are very accustomed to mail ordering things, and yeah. that works for me as well. So why not? Just pushing that, yeah, pushing that for, forward uh, for sure. Um, oh, so on my on the film side of things, right? So I, I my 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 activism is is around food and blackness and like the safety of black people, right? So uh, in America, and so these I wrote a film two years ago. Um, and we, you know, two, three years ago, I wrote it, a short film. We produced it last year, got it done, and now it's in the festival circuit. So we have um, a screening coming up on the 6th at, uh, for Martha's Vineyard African American Film Festival. It's, uh, they're doing it online. On, um, yeah, on thank you. Yeah, we're, in the, we're on the HBO final, we're the finalists for the HBO short film category. So oh, yeah. we, we yeah. can win something. Yes, we can win something. Yeah, um, that's excellent. Yeah, and we have a few more Congrats. festivals coming up. Uh, so that's running in the, in the festival circuits now. And it's, you know, it, we, in, the, in the film, we juxtapose the plight of, or the history really of, of black people and where we are today and how similar they began to look, right? And then what can we do to, to, to move forward out of it? Um, yeah, so yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an experimental sort of genre bending uh, film, but it's doing well. Um, it's, it's got a message to it, and really excited about it. that. One's called Augustus. I'll put that in the in the chat as well. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, okay. So you got your acting side kicking in. You're doing that. You're, you're doing some more recipes. What can we look forward to recipe wise? So the people can like. What are you working on that we can drive people over there to go check it out? So <laughs> Um, I, I'm working, I'm always working on stuff. The thing is now that I, I'm, I'm on a different, so I, I, I'm a food manufacturer, right? So I work with a different, I work with a factory. So I have to like, it's a lot less, I want to do this, I do this. Now it's more like, okay, let me plan for this thing and make sure that I'm able to execute it when I offer it kind of thing. Saying all that to say, I can't commit to nothing in front of people, but I'm working on stuff. So just keep checking the yeah, website. So for all of those who are just kind of starting out, mm -hmm. what would you suggest? Because people, the hardest part, I think, for it's people started, is right. getting started and finding a way, you know, because now people do know that there are a lot of other options. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have a lot of the, the beyond yeah. the burger, or yeah. beyond the transitioning food and things like that. And mm -hmm. um, what, would, what would be, you know, you somebody who kind of just lived your whole life that way. So it's almost right. like you eat with mama and them cook. Right. But somebody who's trying to, you know, stick to it, what would you offer? Like, what could you offer them? Well, I would, I would say first that, you know, be easy on yourself, right? So uh, not everybody can quit cold turkey. Um, you know, if, if someone, were to tell, someone were to tell me, hey, you can't never have, you know, a vegan burger, I'd be like, whoa, 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 slow your roll. You know what I mean? So like, have some empathy with yourself, right? It, you're making a choice because it's better for you. And then start where you can start. You know, people say, oh, well, I can't give up cheese or I can't give up this. Oh, okay, D give up everything but cheese. You know, see see if you can actually do that. Like, test yourself. You're, the human body is so 
resilient and so intelligent, right? All you have to do is say, hey, we're doing this now. And the body will be like, uh, yeah, yeah. and then it'll be like, oh, okay, cool. We're doing this now, it's so right? True. It's so uh, true. Yeah, your your body is, is I can't say it enough. It's so intelligent. Like it just, it it, it will, and, it will and kick in. If you put your head out of the way, mm-hmm. you'll be able to make the transition and it won't yeah. be so difficult for you. And it's exactly. also once you do start that, even if you kind of stay with the cheese eventually, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to try to cut out cheese and eat cheese once a week. And then right. when you start cutting it out, then when you start to eat cheese, you're going to get all the mucus in your throat. <laughs> <laughs> I'd wake up in the morning yeah. like this. Yeah. 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 And that's a sign. Very that- hard. You. And that's a, you know, I think people don't really understand it. Like that's a sign that your body cannot process it, right? Like when you mm-hmm. eat something and you get you get a stomach ache, you get mucusy, you get all this. Like that's your body rejecting it. Yes. You mm-hmm. know, so you really. What kind of meals did I have as a kid? I mean, I don't even remember. I mean, my parents would, you know, they would try to make like sloppy joe kind of things like out of like millet and quinoa they would try to make um you know this was early this was early vegan so we just ate a lot of vegetables you know that maybe they they work with tofu a lot early on um they would uh yeah just it was just a bunch of it was it was never like a a regular like kids meal it was always like them experimenting with something mm-hmm. like here guys this is you know this is dinner <laughs> but I will say, but I will say that, like we had a very southern influence in the house, so like you know, it was grits and you know a lot of sandwiches or like you know different sort of like you know they were always going for texture, like a, something fried or something crispy or something steamed or you know they're always going for something interesting. But I always remember like my it was it was vegetables, it was very vegetable forward, but then it was also just like them trying to mimic things. Wow. So, like, yeah, like I like tough. You're saying your parents were tough because parents yeah. nowadays they just run out of they just get frustrated yeah, okay. and they yeah. just start feeding kids. Then look, you see that box in there, go get that box and eat out that box because you're driving yeah. me crazy. Because kids yeah. are hardcore. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I think it takes a lot of focus to like do that with a kid now that I like see people. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, like I'm an adult and I see like people get like, oh, that's a lot of time. <laughs> you have to appreciate what your parents did, really. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I think that when you, you know, like anything at an early age, because mm-hmm. the first influences are the people that are in your home. Right. And, it, you know, that will determine where it goes from there. So mm-hmm. if they have a strong foundation at home with the food and anything, but like we're talking food, then when they go mm-hmm. out, you empower them by what they're eating and the importance of it at a young age. When they go mm-hmm. out, yeah, it may... They may feel a little which you kind of what away, but there's an element of them feeling empowered that they don't feel as bullied, so to speak, to try. Yeah, right. And and like you just remember, like it sticks with you. Like anything you teach a kid as a kid is is like it imprints on them. And like and you in the back of your mind, and like I know how to eat healthier. I know, I know what I you know I know how I know what's good for me. I know what's good for me exactly. Yeah. And and yeah. your you I know you said you both of your parents were. Did they both? Well, you may not even know this. Did they both come together at the same time and just decide we're going to do this, or did one have to pull the other one? I don't know. Um, the the so that was my mom's story. My dad's my dad. <laughs> I asked my dad the same thing. He was like, he was uh he was very into like the black nationalist movement. He was a Black Panther for a while, but he right. and he was always like a you know. So you get him right. So he mm-hmm. um. So he said when when she came to him with that, he was like, well, if I'm going to be, you know, I'm a revolutionary. If I'm going to have to be out here fighting, man, I can't stop because I run out of fried chicken. So, yeah, we're going to be. (laughs) (laughs) Are you kidding? (laughs) These are my parents. These are my parents. This is who who, who begat me. (laughs) Wow. 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 So, um. What else? Do you wow. have anything else for? I'm for just enjoying the conversation. Yeah, I mean, this is straight up. I've, I've never met anyone who was vegan from birth. Oh, Jen has something. Uh, what do you have to say, Jen? I, I think part of the issue with feeding kids is parents sometimes overestimate the amounts of nu- nutrients kids need. If my six-year-old wants to only eat fruit one day, 
it's totally fine. Uncommon nutrient issues aside, when my kids lead with food, I have found more success. That's true. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that 100%. And if, if they just want fruit for the day, let them have their fruit for the day. My son goes through this thing where he's just on nuts. And I said, don't you want something Oh, else? your son is a the nut. Well, he hasn't eaten nuts in a while, though. He's but not off remember nuts. when he would say to you, nah, I'm okay, I got some nuts. What are you going to eat? Well, he's 21. It's like, now nah, I'm eating nuts. Today. I'm eating nuts. I'm good. I got my nuts. Yeah. I mean, you know, you learn what, what, and I think you're right. Like, kids know what they need, and they'll tell you, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, both my sons are both my sons are vegan, and everyone is always surprised that he likes green smoothies and regular old fashioned oatmeal, maple syrup, or agave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially, especially kids of color. Yeah, you know when when you know it's something about when my sons go to parties, and even when they were little, well, I don't eat that. Why? It's like mm -hmm. they didn't compute that they were conscious about mm -hmm. their bodies and they were you know this mm -hmm. was his son he was more conscious than all of us mm -hmm. and if he mm -hmm. read or saw anything online or they say microwaves no good i don't put my yeah. can, I hear, can i hear ding yes is that a ding from a microwave i hope that's not my food it's like that's not your food can we take them now nobody does microwaves he was that kid that's great so, yeah. yeah yeah you know um i think that um <laughs> it, what I'm a kid that needs your mac, mac and yeast. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think okay. we all need some mac and yeast. Okay, so we're picking yes. some of that. Well, that you can get at Whole Foods. So we're not going to ask yes. you that. You can pick it up at Whole Foods. But that orange cobbler. That orange cobbler is not at Whole Foods. So I don't <laughs> no, understand that one because I need some of that tonight. Because you got to have some dessert. And that is. Dessert. That's true. Sweet potato pies mm. and um, cobbler. Yes, 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 yes. Do My. You uh, I do sweet potato pie. Yeah, my sweet potato pie is my sweet potato pie is nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. I had to learn, so, you know, because I had to learn sweet potato pie. That's not something you could just like run up. You no, know, sweet potato pie. <laughs> right. You yeah. know. Yeah, and see, I run into challenges because I like my sweet potato pie. Sweet potato pie is supposed to be sweet to me. I have a sweet tooth, so you yeah. know, I always I always get clobbered because too sweet. Because mm. it's too sweet. But mm. yeah, I mean, I. No, I don't go too sweet. I like to, it depends too on the potato that you're using. You know, if you're using a yam, True. that's one thing. If you're using a sweet potato, that's something else. But and I mean, I'm it doesn't have to be sweet. Yam. It does have, you do, you do yams? Yeah. Oh, because you like you yams. Yours, yours, so you don't care for yours to be sweet? I don't know. I, it needs to be, it needs to be balanced. It needs to be, for me, like the sweet has to be balanced. No, balance. that's a balance. I don't make them just so sweet. You're like, oh my God. But to run, Anything with a little extra sweetener in it is just oh wait oh, I, I, <laughs> what do you okay. like to okay. well with your pies? Oh, I've yeah. been using um Nadamu, um N A D A M O O. They're like a coconut based one. They're pretty good. That um, was good. What yeah, was good. Nadamu, uh, like Nada. A not a moo, not a no no N A D A. Like it, nada. Like you're nodding. You're nodding. M nada. M -A -A -M, nada. Nada move, yes. M O? In <laughs> other words, <laughs> like the word nada. I just want to spell it. So I'm not yes. to N A D A M O. N A Yeah, M O O. A moo like a cow. Like, and, oh, like oh, a right. cow. Moo. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Nada, nada moo ice moo. cream. Nada, nada moo. moo. Yes. I just say nada in Spanish. Nada. Exactly. Nada. That's Trying to figure out where language that came from, but yes, yeah, Spanish. Yes, not a. Yeah, I'm from New York because you know I'm Puerto Rican. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. I'm not Puerto Rican. I think uh, I'm Puerto Rican. Wait, I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I I'm, I'm, not, I'm Puerto Rican and British, but I'm from the Bronx. Okay, just so you know, because when those accents start coming out, you know, like that, you know. Okay. Okay. I just want okay. to. Say I don't try to do accents anymore. I tried to do a Jamaican accent. And I got dogged out on here. Somebody was like, oh my God, that is the worst Jamaican. Oh my. So now I, have, now I have, no, 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 now I have to hear it. Bet, bet, now I have to hear the accent. No, no, it's it, it, it not good, you know. People talk about it real bad. They don't like it. 
Yeah, you see how she does her hands? They don't like it. Where the hands yes. come up, it goes yes. up, the hand goes up. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> with that said, we are You're winding. laughing because it was real bad, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 100%. Yeah. Let's put this down because we had our hour. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Chef. No, it's Mac and Yeast. Mac. And the ampersand and or A and no no Mac M A C A N D Y E A S E Mac and Yeast and it's Mac and dot com or at Mac and on on the gram too or at Mac and Y E A S E and Y E A S E okay so you yeah. guys make sure you go check them out and if we could talk them into coming and cook with us that would be so fun we won't give any okay. recipes you don't want but we'll get to eat the food and y'all y'all get to look at it. Um, and that's where that's going. Let's have fun that day. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. We'll never we'll see you. Anyway, let's not talk about anything right now. Our friend, well, maybe our girlfriend will come. Yeah. Yeah, maybe she'll come. Yeah. Anyway, we want to thank you all. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you check out his mac and cheese. I'm going to get some tomorrow. Are you? Yeah. I'm going to go to Whole Foods. I'm going to yeah, buy some because I love mac. And I think I've seen it before, but I was scared to buy it. Because, you know, sometimes you be buying those things and you put them in there and you go, who made it? That's what it is. You have to be careful sometimes with everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we have one more thing and then we're going to okay, go. Anthony, Anthony Gonzalez. It's the same in the Latino families. The food is everything from spiritual gatherings yeah. to holidays. People get offended by not eating their dishes. It's true. Oh, yeah. It's so true. Oh. So, so yeah. listen, we're gonna have to, we'll have to do another hour unpacking that because that's so true. Like, that's so, you know what I mean? Like, and it's, and it's not just... And the fact that the same thing happens in black people that happens in brown people, I think not only this says that it's just, it's because we're both under, like that outcome can only come because we're both under the same system of whiteness. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would two cultures have the exact same experience? In a, you know, wow, yeah, that's true, huh? You know? Yeah, I never thought about it. I never really thought about it that way. Yeah. Interesting. Well, Madam, maybe we can talk a little bit about that when we're cooking Thanksgiving because you're coming with us on the 15th to help us cook. And so we can we can, we can dive into a little bit of that on that okay. day, right? Okay, right? sounds right. good. And he said yes, he said yes. It's going to be fun, sweetheart. And no, no, it. no pressure. We're no, just, it is pressure. No pressure. Okay. okay. Wait, 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 look, look. Brother. Yeah. Brother. There's no pressure. No pressure. None at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> thank, thank you so much thanks Jeffrey. so much for doing and, and look out if you want to log into the film festival uh tell them where they can see it um uh, it's uh come to my come to my um my instagram and I'll you, tell you from there it's, it's Martha's oh, vineyard instagram. and there's okay. martha's, martha's vineyard uh, african-american film festival is the thing and it's on facebook but i'll i can give more information or a link on the on the instagram page Perfect. okay so good. And the name of the film all right y'all uh, give me the name of the film. I'm just typing it in. Augustus. Augustus. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Love you. All right. Enjoy. All right. Bye. Love you. Good night. Next week, Bye, you next guys. week we should you. have the recipes for all of you. Yeah, we'll have them put up for yeah, you. So we'll you get your shopping up. list together. Yes, and we, you know, hopefully some of you will join us and cook in the kitchen. Yeah. Then we can eat and we may. Uh, and I have. Make the announcement. I have, I'm a great grandma. I'm a Gigi now. Yes, yesterday she became a great grandma. Great grandma. I know. My granddaughter just had her first child. Little her girl. Name is Kailani, and she's so pretty. But anyway, I'm Gigi now. I'm Gigi. Gigi, Gigi, Gigi with the VG. <laughs> anyway, Thank we have fun with you guys today. See Thank you, you for joining us. Make sure you tell your family and friends. To get on board, if they want to see any past S episodes, you can always check us out on YouTube, Sunday Bites and Tidbits. And we're going to run all of the Doctor Series during our hiatus. During our hiatus. So even though we'll be we won't be together. live, but we will make sure that you can see all of the Doctor Series, yeah. because those were really good ones. And get ready for the new year when you're going to help. That's possibly. right. We Hopefully love you, not, guys. We love you. Bye. Now we can stop sitting on top of each other. Oh. <laughs>